Ladies and gentlemen, let me take you through the troubleshooting process when you get a priority one ticket. Yesterday, I had a priority one ticket for an ATM that was down. For a little bit of context, my name is Jake. I'm a system administrator at an MSP. An MSP is a managed service provider. So we give IT services and we manage IT infrastructure for other companies. Um, so yesterday, I had this P1 come in, ATM is down. I always try and take networking tickets. And anytime something like this is going on, I'm thinking it's probably a networking ticket. Uh, I just love networking. I want to be a network engineer someday. Um, and I think it's beautiful. So I think it's like just a very predictable part of the IT world. But so this ticket comes in. The first thing I'm thinking is, was this ever working? Like was the ATM ever up? And I wanna take you through my thought process with troubleshooting because this is something that even though it was a tier two ticket or a, you know, a sysadmin networking type ticket, the troubleshooting methodology can be used at tier one at anywhere. So my first thought is like, what changed if it was ever working? In this case, it was working before. So that kind of already tells me it's probably not like a port configuration or anything of that sort, unless something changed, like something was somebody was doing work on, on the switch or on a firewall or something like that. So from there, nothing changed. I'm looking at recent tickets. You know, was, is there anything that, that might have changed? And I didn't see anything that had changed that would be really obvious. I also looked at related tickets. This is a absolute key in IT. Oftentimes you can find the solution to your issue because it's probably happened before. So I looked at related tickets and there was one for this exact issue issue that was a month prior. However, in that ticket, I was looking through it and it literally just solved itself. Like nothing, there was no resolution or anything like that. It was just like, oh, you know, hopped in and it came back up. So I was like, what the heck? So I'm just going to cover all my P's and Q's. I'm going to go into the switch and see if I can see that where that ATM is and see if I can see where it's up. So here's another important thing. In IT, you have documentation. Ideally, you'll have good documentation that tells you this is plugged in on this port of this switch, especially if it's something that's mission critical like an ATM. So an ATM is going to be set with a static ID. IP because we're not going to give an ATM DHCP. Um, we're going to give it a static IP because it's very locked down. Like you can't have any of the ATM data leaving where it shouldn't leave, right? Going to other PCs, going to whatever, the public Wi-Fi or anything like that. Like that shouldn't be reachable from there. So we do some network segmentation. We use something called VLANs in a switch. So I hopped into the switch. VLANs are virtual LANs. It's almost like as if you had separate switches, but it's a logical separate separation of those, well, broadcast domains is what they're called um, at layer two. So if you don't know about the OSI model and the layers of it, that's something that I highly recommend that you look into. If you don't know about VLANs, it's also something that I highly recommend that you look into because this is how in IT we use VLANs to actually separate networks right, at layer two. Um, the ATM has its own VLAN, okay? I went into the switch, I ran show VLAN brief, which is a command in the Cisco switch. And I can see which different VLANs I have and which ports are actually tagged with those VLANs. I can see reconciling with my documentation that the ATM is on port, uh, let's say 25. I'm trying to obscure some things a little bit. Um, port 25 is tagged with our ATM VLAN or our security VLAN, which let's just say was VLAN 100. I can see that all of that lines up. After I know which port it's on and see that the port is correctly tagged with that VLAN, I might run something like show IP interface brief. When I run show IP interface brief, it gives me just a very rudimentary uh, breakdown of what these interfaces look like. Um, it'll show if traffic is actually passing over that interface. Um, if traffic is passing and everything's normal, it'll show up, up. Uh, if it's not, it'll show down, down. And in this case, port 25 for the ATM port showed down, down. Now this could be for a lot of things. Normally with the switch, it's that something's not plugged in right. So I'm thinking like something along the line got unplugged, right? A cord got tripped over or it's just not snugly fit into the switch. So I reach out to the internal contact and I'm like, hey, can you just check port 25? Just make sure that that uh, switch port, the ethernet is plugged into it well. Um, and she actually took a little bit. She took like an hour and a half doing this. I just emailed her. Um, <laughs> like in my estimation, if I email you, if, if you put a priority one ticket in and I email you and you take an hour and a half to get back, maybe it's not as much of a priority as we originally thought it was. So I just email her. Uh, she goes and checks it. She says, hey, like I, I unplugged it. I plugged it back in. Uh, there was link lights when I plugged it back in. And I'm thinking like, like if link lights are on on a switch, uh, this means that data is, is passing over that link uh, more than likely. So after that hour and a half, I go back into the switch and I see that it shows up, up. And I'm like, what the heck? So I tried pinging the ATM. Well, ATMs are again, very, very locked down. Um, oftentimes they don't respond to the protocol that ping uses, which is called ICMP. Um, so it, it's not responding to pings, but that's kind of normal. Like that doesn't tell me that the ATM is necessarily down. And this is another learning lesson too, which is not everything responds to ping. Just because something doesn't ping doesn't mean that it's down necessarily, especially security related stuff is probably not gonna respond to ping. Some servers don't respond to pings. Some firewalls or network devices don't respond to pings by design. Um, and so in the case of this ATM, it didn't respond to ping, but the link showed up, up, 
And I was like, what the heck? So I called the lady. She said that she reached out to the vendor for the ATM. There's actually two vendors. There's like the one that actually manages the ATM and there's the core software vendor. This is a uh, banking, of course, where the ATM actually sends its data. Um, the core software vendor was the one that had said that the ATM was down. And that was when they realized and put this priority one ticket in with us because we manage all the network infrastructure. The actual ATM vendor emailed them and said that they were doing maintenance on the ATM that took longer than they expected. <laughs> so basically the whole priority one was that this company was doing maintenance on the ATM. Um, it took longer, I guess they didn't communicate it well. And then we somehow got, got muddled in. But it was a nice experience for me and it was a nice opportunity to be able to hop into a network device, um, verify connectivity, think about layer one on the OSI model, is everything plugged in correctly? Uh, layer two, logical segmentation of a, of a network using VLANs. Uh, and then of course, a little bit of layer three where I'm kind of pinging around. Uh, outside of that, I don't really know how the ATM itself would connect to to the core software vendor. I suppose there's probably uh, at the firewall level, maybe like a BGP peering or a VPN tunnel or something like that from that branch straight to that core software vendor where the ATM can you know, send its traffic. But important lessons with logical segmentation of a network at layer two using VLANs, uh, layer three segmentation. And then also understanding that even though it's a priority one, even though it's like a scary ticket where uh, a mission critical ATM is down, like the answer to a lot of networking issues and a lot of big picture issues is a lot simpler than you think. Like you'd think as a sysadmin, I'm doing super complex stuff, coding, you know, all this crazy stuff, uh, setting up cool scripts and all that, which I, I do do some of that stuff. But realistically, like to be a good system administrator, it's just understanding IT infrastructure and how things fit together. And honestly, we're starting from layer one too. Like just like a tier one would do is, is everything plugged in right? Um, What's the error message on the ATM, which they did give a little bit more detail and the error message on the ATM was like TCP IP something, but I just started with layer one. And by the time she got back to me an hour and a half later, the ATM was already back up. So uh, it was a WP1, how we say over here, like it was a, I was very happy that, that uh, it was an easy ticket. Maybe I would have liked to do a little bit more network verification, but important not to overcomplicate simpler things. Guys, I'm gonna make more videos like this where I'm talking through my day-to-day uh, -day tickets, real life experiences as a system administrator. Hope you find this useful. If you have any questions, comments, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to reply to them. Um, any suggestions, always open to feedback. Appreciate you guys. Be safe, be smart, make some good decisions, and good luck when you get the scary ATM down priority one ticket. Bye.